Hello everyone and welcome to my channel called Demon Story Time. Today we continue reading this amazingly lovely book called Fairy Tales. Yeah, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, for your likes, comments, for your donation, any kind of support. I really appreciate it. And today's story will be called Tumlin. Tumlin? Here is the lovely Prince Knight, whoever he is, if you can see. Yeah. One day and one week and one year in the parish of Melrose, young Tumlin fell from his horse while riding. He fell into the land of fairies, huh? Love fairies. and into the power of the fairy queen who dressed him in green velvet and silk spot locked up his soul in fairyland. Huh. When he did not come home, Tumlin's sweetheart Jan Janet wept for him. And after that she searched for him, asked after him from Merlos to Selkirk. Selkirk, Selkirk. But no one had seen so much as one red hair of Tamil. All they had seen was a highwayman dressed in green, a robber with red hair who stopped maidens by the holy well at the crossroads and demanded their cloaks or rings or dresses. The maidens said that the robber's eyes were blue as the sea but seemed to be full of tears. So Janet went to the crossroads, well dressed in her finest clothes, and there the highwayman leaped out at her with a stand and deliver your green cloak or your fi finery. Shame on you, Tamlin! Come you home at once, scolded Jan Janet. Do you call this honest work for the master of Carterhout? Come home with me this instant. Ah, Janet, Janet sighed the young man. I fear I can never come home for I kiss the queen of the fairies <laughs> and now for seven years I must obey her every command. Kissed her? Then I'm sure you deserve your fate, huh? said Janet. Flaring up and she turned her horse and drove back home, her nose sniffy tilted in the air. But when her temper cooled, Janet sat down and thought. She sat and thought from harvest till har Halloween, Halloween, and then she sa saddled, saddled her horse and said, Goodbye to her mother. I must go and rescue Tumlin, for you know how helpless men are to save themselves. Ha. Oh, but you'll not go out tonight, protested her mother. Not when the wind is so keen. I have a warm cloak to keep off the wind, mother said Janet. Oh, but you'll not go out tonight, begged her mother, not when the rain is so teeming. I have a hood to keep off the rain, mother, said Janet. Oh, but you'll not go out tonight of all night, pled her mother. Not on all Halloween, Hallows Eve, when all the powers of hell 
and fairyland are out and roaming the world. No other night will do, said Janet, and kissing her mother she mounted up and rode into the wild, wet, windy night. <sighs> she rode the crossroads where the gloves stood, she braved the ghost who floated in the misty bo hollow. She braved the demons who snatched at her skirt out of the long grass. She braved the witches who flitted and twittered across the stormy moon. And she braved the gra gravia graveyard, oh my god, where died souls who hooted in the trees, hiding behind the well at the Crossroads, Janet waited for midnight, when the gates of Fairyland would open and lose the drops of the Fairy Queen to fly out about and make mischief. At last the ki they came, the Queen leading the way, her horse's ma mane was knotted with silver bells and her stolen silk pet petticoats swept the muddy ground her company of men was huge each one young and handsome each one kidna ki kidnapped from the sunlit world last of all came tumbling on a milk white mare, and the moon glint on the teardrops in his eyes. Voice also cry. Mm. Out sprang Janet and dragged him from his horse, pulling him to the ground, knocking her white fingers in his rust red hair. Come with me and stay with me, she said, for you are my true love, Tomlin. Hey. <laughs> but the thing is, in her arm was not Tomlin. In moment he had changed into a slithering snake, which knot and coiled and Rooted all around her. Now will you let me go? Foolish Janet. Love the fairy queen. Never. You may change him, but my love for him never changes. And she clung on tight to the snake. Thought it made her skin crawl with horror. But the thing thing in her arm was no longer a snake. Suddenly it had but put on feathers and clung claws and was slashing at her with a sharp hooked beak. Now will you let him go, foolish Janet? sneered the queen. Never you may change him, but my love for him never changes. And she gripped so tight to the vulture that tufts of black feathers came away in her hands. But the thing in her arms was no longer a vulture. Suddenly it had put on f fur and grown into the towering figure of a bear. Be bear. <laughs> it huged Janet to its furry ribs with a strain strength which all but wrung the life out of her. Now will you let him go, foolish Janet, called the queen, never. You may change him, but my love for him never change. And she sunk her fingers deep into the 
pairs through so that they looked like two dancers whirling in the moonlight. But the thing in her arms did not remain a bear for long. It became a lion, oh my god, a conger eel, a wolf and a boar. It became a skeleton, a goblin, a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, cockling witch even so Janet refused to let go break Janet last and worst of all the thing in her arms lost all living shape lost arms and claws and tusks and tail it Thinned to the girth of a spear coat and rigid toad sewn in grew warm in her grip. Tamlin had turned into an iron bar, almost too heavy for Janet to carry, and as she staggered. Under its weight, the iron bar grew hot, red hot, white hot, singing her cloak and her hair. Drop him, let him fall, foolish Janet, shrieked the fairy queen, but Janet would not let go her grip on the enchanted tumbling. Instead, she walked with the white hot bar to the brink of the well and threw it down into the holy water there was a mighty hiss of steam probably like that here is the Janet saving Tamlin keeping him really tight Evil fairy. Away, away, your majesty, cried Janet. Dawn is almost here, the feast of all hall hallows, when the an angels rise out to haunt the likes of you. With a howl of vex vexation, the fairy queen gathered up her reins. A curse on you, brave Janet, for you have robbed me of the finest man in my whole company. <laughs> away, man, away, and the ground shook to the thunder of their galloping hooves as the enchant and the enchanted fled back to fairyland. Janet reached down and took her sweetheart's hand, shivering and sudden mo mosey and with frogs in his pockets. <laughs> Tumbling climbed out of the well. His fairy clothes had Fallen into rocks, but his hair was still as red as copper, and his eyes were still as blue as ever they had been. I'll still marry you, thought I'm probably a fool to myself, said Janet, looking him up and down, her hands on her hips. But if ever I hear you been kissing fairies again i swear i'll take the broom to you and sweep you out of doors now let's get you home before you catch your death of cold and sharing her horse they rode home now when the young man of melrose heard what Janet had been ready to do for her sweetheart. They 
came round her door as eager as bees round a pot of honey. A prince and a ch chieftain both asked to marry her. But Tamlin rolled up his sleeves and spat on his hands and said he would fight every man in Scotland before he let his Janet go. <laughs> For the love he had poured in his heart now would never change, no, not till fairyland fell into rounds and the hills were down to sound. Unbelievable. That's love, guys. Thank you so much for coming and see you next time. Bye.